Now we're finally really going to do philosophy, and I'll start with the problem of universals. This is a very old problem in philosophy, and it was quite central to ancient philosophy as well as medieval philosophy, but even today philosophers are still thinking about it. So, what are universals? You have universals and you have particulars. And a universal, for instance, is something general, something universal, like men, like people, men. As distinct from specific individuals, such as, let's say, this here is Jan, this here is Pete, this here is Steve. So man, in general, is a universal. And if I could draw, I would draw the Da Vinci's Vitruvian man to draw it very, very beautifully. Um, how does it go again? In a circle, you know, with perfect proportions. So man here, it's really... Oh, <laughs> this is horrible, but it should be man in all its glory, in all its essential characteristics. In distinction from Jan, he looks a bit different, and Pete looks a bit different. So you have all these different specific individuals are particulars, while man in general is a universal. Or you could say the same about anything. Tables, for instance. You have the universal table. Many things, many different particulars are tables, and you have, for instance, my little table in the dining room, in my, or let's say in my, uh, and there's another table uh, at school, etc. And there are, there are many, many different instances of tables. And the one is a little bit bigger than the other, the one has a round surface, the other has a square surface, the other one has a, a cube, cubic kind of surface. So that's really the difference between universals and particulars. And we could, we could point out some characteristics of universals versus particular, uh, particulars. Um, for instance, there's only one man, there's only one universal man, while there are many, many particular instances of men. There's Jan, there's Pete, there's Steve. There are many, many particular instances of tables. And what else? Man, as a universal, it's about the essential the essential characteristics of man and not about the accidental accidental characteristics of man. So, as I said, this is the Vitruvian man and it's perfect in all its proportions. But here, Jan, for instance, um, he's, his left leg is a little bit shorter than his right leg and Pete, uh, Pete has no hair, he's bald and Steve, um, Steve lacks a finger here. So these are accidental characteristics and it's not necessary that um, man lacks a finger. It's not part of the essence of man to lack a finger. This is related to perhaps another characteristics of universals. In a sense they seem to be perfect. Perfect. Certainly, if we think about Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, it is perfect, it does not lack a finger, while particular instances of universals, like man, are imperfect. Imperfect. They have accidental characteristics, and not every characteristic of its universal are perfectly implemented. Okay, and the same with tables. So, essentially, um, a table has a surface and four legs, but it is possible that, um, that its specific implementation, that a particular table 
that the one leg is a little bit longer than the other so that it shakes a little bit or you know the surface is not fully fully straight so that um, perhaps if you put a bottle on it the bottle te tends to fall off um, but these are all these are all imperfect uh, elements of the table accidental characteristics of the table which are not a part of um, let's say the universal idea of what the table is okay so that to give you a little bit of an overview on what universals are and what particulars are and now let's talk philosophy perhaps first why do we even bother thinking about universals and particulars well the ancient greek philosophers and medieval philosophers and many philosophers but but it's not fully people today wouldn't all agree but the old guys they believe that knowledge it's really insight into universals rather than particulars so to achieve knowledge we should know something about universals there's actually one more characteristics that I could um, uh, stick on universals and namely Men will always be men, so it's in a sense eternal. While Jan, he will not always be Jan, he will change and, and he will die at a certain moment. So this is, particulars are, let's say, temporary. They're temporary. They change. They might they might even die and disappear and knowledge for the ancient Greeks must be eternal it cannot just be temporary if the object of knowledge changes the whole time you cannot really have knowledge in the strict sense knowledge or for the ancient Greek that was the same as science science so we're, we're talking about real deep knowledge that must be about this stuff okay now what is the problem of universals because here I said something about the importance I mean knowledge is about universals but what, what is a problem well you can think about it I mean universals like man or table it's not obvious what it really is particulars that's pretty obvious why because we see we see particulars you, i mean jan you, you haven't seen him yet but um i mean i apparently never appear myself on these videos but you hear him so in a sense you kind of know that i exist uh but pete and steve you might encounter them and this table in the room that table at school that's all stuff that you see and it's it's pretty obvious stuff but man in general that's not something which you encounter every day. It's perhaps not even something which you ever encounter. Or tableness in general. That's not something you really see. You see a specific table. You see this and that table. But not tables in general. Therefore, one can ask the question, so if, we're, if we talk about the problem, there's one problem, and that is about the existence of universals do they really exist we don't observe them so do they exist and philosophers have taken different stances on that issue the second question is if they exist where do they exist where do they exist because it's pretty obvious where these guys are Jan, Pete and Steve, the one guy, he's, he's in Belgium, he's at his desk doing the, these videos. Pete and Steve, they are there. I mean, they're all, in a sense, in this world. But universals, we don't see them in this world. And where are they? Are, are, they, are they also here, but in a sense hidden in, somewhere in here? Or are, are they so, somewhere else? So that's the question of where do these universals exist? And then a third question, also if they exist, one could still wonder um, how we can know them. How can we get to know universals? 
like so knowledge is about universals, but how how do we acquire knowledge of universals? How know? <clears throat> Okay, so these are, these are the fundamental problems with universals. And in the next lessons I will talk a little bit about Plato's and Aristotle's solutions to these problems.